Hola community, I'm Pablo Vasquez. I'm at home, just like you should, with another week of updates of Blender. Let's see what's new. Multi-res. Multi-resolution is the modifier that has been for years in Blender and helps you move from a lower resolution to a higher resolution back and forth. This is uh, incredibly useful for like sculpting, especially or for animating even if you want to animate in a lower uh, subdivision level and then uh, render in a higher subdivision level for example. Also division, reshaping and apply base should be fixed. There is a one thing that is not there yet which is the ability to sculpt in different levels other than the higher level that is in the in process is being worked on but at least the first chunk to like subdivide reshape and apply base it's there and now it's just about polishing and bringing back all those features so yes amazing multi res and while we're in the topic of modifiers, the Corrective Smooth modifier got a new scale parameter to help you deal with the volume loss in certain deformations. And lastly, the Deform modifiers got a performance improvement, yay, for better uh, performance, better FPS, so while well, your, your playback should be faster. In the example file, there was a really extreme case with 0.6 FPS, now it's 0.93 FPS, so pretty good. Yeah, less than 1 FPS is not a lot, but it is a, it's an example file with the heavy complex scenes just for testing purposes. Sculpt mode, two new features. Edge auto masking allows you to sculpt without changing the edges of your mesh. It's a new property that you can find in the advanced panel of the brushes and allows you to, uh, for example, if you're sculpting cloth, that you already have the shape all, all fine, but you want to add some wrinkles, for example, without pulling all of the mesh, this setting will leave everything, all the edges untouched, and it will just allow you to sculpt inside. Pretty handy. And second, the mesh filter tool now allows you to relax and relax the face sets. Cycles. This one will help in compositing especially. It's a new setting that allows you to exclude volumes from the view layer. Just like you can do it with the hair and surfaces already, now with also volumes. Hmm, why is suddenly this setting? Maybe because there is a new object type volume coming very very soon? Hmm. Momento. <laughs> you know what? It was just added while I was making this video. So. Stay tuned until the end of the video, I'm gonna make a, an announcement about how to present these new features. EV, light, cache, update, slash, improvements. Reflection props have been uh, improved a lot to solve some of the um, glitches or like artifacts that were happening in some cases with some lines that you could see sometimes. That has been solved. But you have to rebake your light caches for files uh, older than 2.83. You have to open the file and rebake with this new cache. And the caches that you do in 2.83 cannot be opened in 2.82. You will have to rebake again in that. They're not compatible. There's a completely different system, but it's uh, worth it. It uh, looks much, much better. User interface. Bunch of icons were added for the, all the new tools that have that were added in 2.83, like uh, the school uh, brush, trophy sets, a bunch of grease pencil ones, and also improvements to the previous icons were done just to make them all more consistent. Speaking of icons, the alert dialog, for example, when you are quitting Blender, shows now a larger icon, more sharp also. Six new things were added to the uh, list of uh, built-in themes that come with Blender. They are provided by the community. Some of them are application-based, some of them are more uh, general purpose, and some of them are even very practical, like the print-ready one. So if you want to print a Blender screenshot in black and white, you can choose the theme and it should just look fine. It's more high contrasty. These themes were provided by the community. There is a thread on DevTalk uh, forums where you can find all of the themes that the community provided. And lastly, the key map preferences now is a bit better organized now. It looks a bit less noisy now, more like a list. And the papri, pap -pap papri, <laughs> a bit of everything. The grease pencil modifiers, tint and vertex color now are merged. They now there's just one modifier because they used to be two. They were in different implementations at different times, but they end up doing the same. So now there are merged. The draw engine, the particle sprites now have anti-aliasing, so they look much nicer. Which also reminds me that the workbench engine got uh, refactored completely for simplification. Now it's, uh, it's a lot more readable. No functional changes, so it's just for the developers and for future changes to come. 
The collection manager add-on that comes built in Blender to help you organize your collections better. It's uh, got a new feature recently that resembles a bit of the those 20 little squares that were in the header of the 3D view in 2.7. Now though that's a feature, it's a sort of try and like implemented in a way that works with collections in this add-on. So if you miss that feature, go to uh, the add-ons section and use the collection manager add-on. And lastly, this one is for Python developers or scripters add-on developers. These are two new methods for each set and for each get that allows you to go through arrays much faster. There's an example where if you use it for like going through the image.pixels array, this is much, much faster now, especially when using float images. And that is all for this week. Thank you for staying until the end. I like doing these recaps. I think it's nice, concise. They're more easy to share. So if you share them, that's super nice. But I think that now that everybody is at home or should be at home, it's uh, still nice to, to hang out live, to do a live stream. I think uh, it, would, it will cheer up a lot of people. It will definitely cheer me up uh, to, to actually have some interaction with you guys. Super nice to do. And maybe we should, we should keep doing it. So recaps at uh, the beginning of the week. And what about Friday? What are your plans on Friday? Momento. Do you know what? It's tough times out there. So what if instead of doing Blender today, we do Blender every day? Because, you know, everybody's hanging out at home and we could all use some chatting, some chilling and some Blender nerding. So what if instead of doing the Blender update once a week, we're going to do it every day with people from the community until we uh, and until this thing it's over at least. So let's see how it goes. For the first episode, I have the honor to have not just one guest, not two, but three. I'm gonna have the Grease Pencil team, all three of them, gonna be here uh, here in this channel chatting about the new Blender um, 2.83 with the refactor and all the, the pain that went through it and all the new tools. So what a better place to hang out. Remember, Thursday, 19th of March, it's the same time, same place as always here in the Blender Foundation YouTube channel. And uh, let's see, let's go through this uh, quarantine together. See you soon. Bye bye.